Coyle Ray talks about her issues with their record label while trying to release new music. Why we never ran with Wicked Butterflies? Let me tell you, when I dropped Blue Moon, I'm not on Republic Records no more. I'm on Island. When I dropped Blue Moon, Republic, they wanted pop shit. Like, they wanted some Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande shit, which I can do, but I still like to work on my own pace and my own time. And I'm still, like, developing and learning and my own sound and shit. So I felt like it just, you know, the Blue Moon shit, they ain't like. I would say. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I wouldn't say that they didn't like, but it was something that they felt like they didn't want to put no money into. So when I got to come out of my pocket and put my own money into my own music, you got to make real life decisions. Hello? Hello? Ma, where you at? You still want me to come? Yeah, come on. Our appointment's at 3 o'clock. Okay, all right. I, I just want to check. I'm outside walking breaks and I'm headed that way. All right, I'll see you soon. Okay, bye. Bye. Me and my mom going to get our nails done together. I'm going to get my nails done, so I've got to bring her with me. Uh, but yeah, I feel like a lot of shit, my versatility, not everybody supports every single koi in the pond, if that makes sense. So my versatility, sometimes I'm rapping, singing. Um, baby boys, deep boys, and different boats, different floats. Not everybody likes a certain things, so I get it. Never shot the video that wanna come through. When I come through, it was rushed. I wanted to just drop music. That'd be my fault. I'd be wanting to put out music, and people be like, my labels, they wanna roll the shit out. And I get it. But I'd be like so f***ed up on just trying to drop. I feel like I'd be wanting to drop at least like and I have so much music. And then I make the music and then I, I, I get over it. Like I make the music, I go through a time. I, okay, so I write through experience. So I, I have an experience, I make the music and then I go through new experiences and the music just sits on my phone. And I'm like, all right, I don't want to drop that. I'm not feeling like that this year. I felt like that last year. <laughs> now I'm with Island. Um, January, February, March, April. It's been like three months. January, February, March, April, about to be four months. The transition is is happening. Yo. Sitting on music, I agree. Bitch, sitting on music is stupid to me. I feel like, but at the same time, too, you it's not. Because music is like a baby. You want to nourish it and cherish it. And really give it what it needs to. So it could perform well. And so, so that, not even so it could perform well. I feel like my releases need to be my releases is to touch the world not to get to the top numbers but to touch the world i think that's what all music should be about like what you genuinely love in the heart no expectations behind it just kind of like whatever while while still being one of the best standing on that I miss the mixtape era. Me too, Amina. I miss the mixtape era too, where we were able to just drop music on a mixtape, on a sound, on the SoundCloud. But see, I stopped dropping music on SoundCloud because I started getting bigger. And the bigger you get, the bigger the budgets are, the bigger the fees are, the the more people want from you. And um, I wasn't Coilerae with the little Coilerae braids anymore. I had to realize like, oh shit, these just want 20 bands for this beat? How the f am I gonna clear this beat for 20 bands and I'm an upcoming artist? How the f <laughs> So that's something I had to deal with, like dropping, paying for $20,000, $10,000 beats and still being able to drop them on SoundCloud. It was like, nah, the label wasn't having that. Nobody wants to pay all that money just for that shit to be on a sh free streaming platform. I get it.
If nothing really, I could do. I feel like right now, my focus, now that I kind of like went through this big transition and, you know, a couple personal things outside, my focus is to just kind of get back to, I don't know. What happened to Patek Philippe? I still have it. I lost two. Well, one of my homies lost two of my plain Jane Rolexes. I had a two plain gray face and a blue face. They, she, she lost both of them. So, I realized the material shit just doesn't even matter. <laughs> when you lose two fucking Rollies, I'm like, boy... Okay, I can <laughs> give me a swatch. <laughs> back to the basics with what you know. It's always been back. It's always, I've always stuck to what I know. The problem is, is like, I be feeling like it'd be me against the world. I'm gonna always stick to what I believe in, no matter what. <laughs> But when it comes to, but at that point, you got to stand on that shit. Stand on what you believe in. And when you feel like it's you against the world, then you got to kind of like. It's not me against the world. It's me and God, honey, first of all. But yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I want to see uh, what's in my bag situation. I got keys. I got glasses with no case on them. That's why all my shit be ruined because I just don't take care of my stuff. Wallet. Big, big Goyard. Excuse me. A lint brush, just in case. Bitch get linty, some AirPods. A lighter for that, you know what I mean? Some lotion. My ashy ass hands and some lip gloss. That's all I got in this bag today. <laughs> they just said she sold them since. <laughs> ah, yeah, right. I don't. I don't think so. I, no, they're lost. Trust me. One of them got left in a hotel. You know, it's not the the cleaning ladies, bitch. Hmm. Was that is that Dior lip gloss? I don't think this is Dior. I actually think this is. Oh, it is Dior. How do... Damn. <laughs> okay, makeup girlies. Thanks for tuning in to Nine Mag TV.